mean samurai warriors. That's what it means. So when you, put, when you say, I can't do that, and you say, okay, well, I'm just going to go dig a hole and put my head in the sand, what do I see the world like? I see it upside down now. And that is what I tell you most preachers see the world like. They see it because they're not brave enough to preach this kind of message that I'm going to bring tonight. They go, "Uh uh-uh. God's a God of blessing and prosperity and love and ooey-gooeyness. But as I was saying earlier, and you guys missed it, we were singing indescribable, uncontainable, all that. Is your God somebody that you can place a little um, um, collar on and say, come with me? And and he goes with you everywhere you want to go. Or is your God untamable and awestruck you fall to your knees as you humbly proclaim that he is an amazing God? We can't tame him. We can't control him. He is not a genie in a bottle. He is not somebody that we think he, you know, he, he fits our description of what we want God to be like. He puts his finger on things that are very painful. And he says, give that to me. And if you don't, you have a choice. If you don't give that to him, then you're sticking your head in the sand. sand. And the world's going to pass you by, and you're not going to be a father to the remnant. That's what God showed me. I trembled when I saw that. I tremble at the fact that God has called me to do something that's really hard, and he says, and don't fall short of the ministry that I have for you, of the plans that I have for your ministry. That makes me tremble because I don't have a lot of grace to do it. I don't have a lot of resources. I'm on my knees going, God, actually what I'm doing is I'm I'm climbing going, where are the answers? (laughs) Please, as I keep obeying him, I keep moving. And I'm going to tell you, every time I obey, it gets harder and harder and harder and harder as you'll see at the end of my lesson tonight. But he wouldn't father the remnant. He was worried more about the treasure. He sees a God of blessing and prosperity and all that. But the key of David unlocks who you really are, where you can take the territory. Because I think that what's happened is we've been locked up, and we need a key to get out. And I think this is what it is. So Rosh Hashanah is the 9th of September. It's coming up. There are 10 days that are going to happen from the 10th to the 17th, which is called the 10 days of awe. It's 10 days that you are to afflict yourself. God is looking at your life, what you did the entire year, and he's going to judge you. Don't like that word, do you? Well, you'll get over that by tonight. He's going to look at your life, and he's going to judge you. That's what happens during the 10 days of all. That's why on Yom Kippur on the 18th, the, the priest, the high priest goes in and he takes the blood. He takes the blood of an animal it was back then. Of course, now we know it's the blood of Jesus. But he takes the blood in and it's a sacrifice for the sins. Because my goodness, if he looks at our sins, we're in trouble, right? But see, remember what I said. God said to me this week, grace is for sinners. Glory is for my warriors. So what I see is like this this uh, line. And I see when you first come to God, it says that grace abounds where sin abounds, right? But as you come up that line, you're expected to stop sinning. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You're to stop sinning. And it is possible because you can't ascend the hill of the Lord without clean hands and a pure heart. Now remember, I don't care if you're a sinner or somebody who's truly going for the fullness, okay? But don't be a pretender. A pretender is somebody who wants to look like they're good to everybody else, but they have absolutely no intention of having a relationship with God. So God doesn't like pretenders. He can take a sinner, a babe, that just keeps, it is just, you know, enslaved with all the sin. Or he wants somebody who's really going for the fullness. Okay? 
But the thing is, is grace is for sinners. So as you keep moving towards the fullness, what happens right here is God comes to you and he puts his finger on idols in your life. And he says, if you don't give this to me, you're going to fall. And as you keep being obedient in my life, I mean, it, was, it started out very small. And it, it was bigger then. But, and he says, as you keep being obedient to me, you don't need grace. Now, I fall in sin, not intentional, though. And I fall on my knees and say, God, where did that root come from? Rip it out. I repent. I don't want that in there. So I don't need grace because I don't have a lot of sin, right? We want the glory. Sinners are not bringing the glory. I'm going to tell you that right now. The glory is not going to come into a church that is led by demons, pretenders, so that's why God said, who wants the glory? Because if you want the glory, you're going to have to have clean hands and a pure heart. So that's what God showed me, was it's coming, y'all. I'm telling you, I believe that, well, you could see 9-11 happened during that time period. The stock market crashed during that time period. Anything that's going to happen to the world, God's looking at the world and he's looking at individuals. And I'm telling you, if we fall short, remember, remember, many, many tekel you farsen, where the hand, hand was writing on the wall, and he says, you've fallen short. It was the same time period. So we don't want to fall short. We want to tonight, if we're pretending, we need to repent. Because we're going for the glory. The glory of God is coming. And if you're a pretender, or if you're a heathen, well, if you're a heathen, you're going to be on your face. If you're a pretender, you're probably going to be dead. Because Ananias and, Ananias and Sapphira died because they lied to the Holy Spirit. And to tell you the truth, I'm really glad for that. I want that to happen because fear will be among the people for my God. My God looks no different than Allah or Buddha or any of the other gods out there today. Because there is no fear. And then it says, and extraordinary miracles were being done. Because the people reverenced that God. You don't lie to that God, I'll tell you that. But our God looks no different. Why? Because we're locked up. We need the key of David. We need out. Okay? But I'm going to tell you something. David was a warrior. And when he faced, we read this nice little story about David facing Goliath, and he's the only one out of the whole camp of Israel. Israel were full of warriors. And this little kid was the only one out of the camp that said, I'll fight him. And I think that, you know, I think about that very nonchalantly, but then now I'm feeling, I'm going, oh my goodness, this is very scary. And that's what God wants us to see. So anyway, I'm going to start here with uh, Hebrews 9. This is what God started showing me this week. Hebrews 9, 24 through 28. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor was it that he would offer himself often as the high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own. The high priest, like I said, would go into the holy of holies every year to make at one mint. Now, at one mint, like I told you, eternal life is oneness with the Father. Jesus did not pray for you to go to heaven. He prayed for you to have oneness with the Father. His last hours on earth. So oneness is what we're going for. So that he would make at one mint atonement for the people of the nation's sins on Yom Kippur. Okay? And that is a type and shadow of Sheol. I've never, ever heard this message in church, but it is strong throughout the Bible. Sheol is the place where you willingly lay down your life and say, okay, Lord, I give you whatever you want. You keep coming and I give it to you, whatever you want. I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. And you go through suffering and sacrifice. And everybody else is just having a, a heyday. They're having a great time, okay? But you're called to go to Sheol. Remember when Jesus went into the wilderness 
And he faced the devil 40, 40 days in the wilderness. He overcame the devil in the wilderness, but that was his shield moment. Okay? And it's all throughout the Bible. If you question this, come see me, because 